Hey, hello, I'm Julie Jo. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're not new here, welcome back. I know, I know, I think this video might be pretty long, but it's a great topic. I think it should be discussed and I have an amazing example to show you. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it. You can subscribe if you'd like to. Check out the description for my sources for this video. You can also find my email, my social media, and all of that below. Today we're going to be covering Young Living and a top leader video that was sent to me. Shout out to the person who sent this to me. I don't know if she wants me to like say her name, but she knows who she is and I really, really, really appreciate it. If there are things you want me to react to, watch, see, discuss, whatever it is, you can email me. That's the best way to do it. I do have a bit of a script because I think it's important that I get my point across very well in this video or as best that I can. Let's get started. I don't care about you and him I don't care about what has been I only care about your soft skin Cause we're still sleeping in my head I don't care about you and him I don't care about what has been I only care about your soft skin so there are certain things that we need to cover before watching this video because, oh my gosh, this video is a perfect example of what we're talking about. Also, apparently, Young Living has been declining rapidly in the last year or so. I know Savannah Marie has a few videos on why and, and in a Behind MLM article, which I will put below, it talks about how the FDA sent them a warning letter about their products and how they're selling it as quote unquote like prescription drugs. It's a whole thing. Feel free to read it below. And they sent that in 2022. And I know there has been other things that have gone on and I recommend going and watching Savannah's video or reading on it in the Behind MLM article. I recommend grabbing a drink and a snack because it might be a bit long of a video. I believe that most of the marketing companies and their distributors use a lot of cult tactics and oftentimes make their own cult out of their downline. Raise your hand if you've seen it. I know I have. So in this video, we're going to talk about what that looks like and how it fits in with this wild video that we're about to watch. In this video, there's a lot of talk about mindset. And I'm sure that if you've seen any anti MLM video of any kind, you've heard the word mindset. In this video, they say it like a hundred times. If you want to get super smashed, I recommend taking a shot every time they say Mindset. But I wouldn't recommend it if you don't want to because you will. You'll get smashed. And by that I mean highly intoxicated. I personally don't think that mindset is what they mean. The definition of mindset is a set of beliefs that shape how you make sense of the world and yourself. It influences how you think, feel, and behave in any given situation. It means that what you believe about yourself impacts your success or failure. So like I said, I don't think they mean mindset. I think they mean thought reform. We'll get into that and talk about MLMs and why they're cults, and then we'll watch the video of a perfect example of one in my opinion. We're going to cover how cults change your brain, like literally, chemically, how they change your brain, how they change your thought process, and the indoctrination that goes with it. We're going to cover how multi-level marketing, in a sense, uses cult techniques and tactics, as well as, like I said, I believe that a lot of downlines become a cult. And then we're going to watch the video, so let's get started. I will have all of these sources below. You can find this source. It's called How Cults Change Your Brain. I'm going to read some of it and discuss it with you. So it says, cults have reputation for luring and vulnerable individuals under the veil of comfort and identity. Then once they've been drawn in under these pretenses, cults start to break them down in a way that destroys their sense of self and has them marked by trauma should they leave. I believe that one of the biggest ways you can understand if something is a cult or not is if these people have a sense of self or if they kind of have a group think. And in MLMs, I believe that the process of it is to kind of lose your sense of self and to become a part of this group, have thoughts that this group has, and lose who you are to become a part of this. According to California psychiatrist Dr. Daniel Siegel, psychologically healthy people understand that although we share many similarities with others, we also have many differences too. Rather than being a bad thing though, understanding and appreciation of these similarities and differences lead to integration and harmony as opposed to conflict. Instead of promoting this idea of the self and others, however, cults tend to assert that harmony can only exist via one way of living, theirs, with any differentiation worthy of exile or isolation. I have seen that in a ton of MLMs, 
personally I've even experienced where when I left I was pretty much <laughs> exiled and lost a lot of people a lot of friends and honestly I cut off a lot of people to get into and be a part of this cult that I was in and I had lost them still even after I'd left it the idea of the individual self is completely disregarded. Interpersonal value is only recognized after the individual has done away with their personal differences in favor of deriving their full identity from the group, from likes and dislikes to who they speak with. Many are urged to cut contact with the outside world, including family and friends. How they dress and their day-to-day -day routine. And I think that has a lot to say with MLMs. I know that we make jokes about their hats right the arbon brim hats the money brim hats there's some hee hee ha ha about their income producing activity the work that they do every day but this in my opinion is more of a modern internet way of controlling someone's day and what they wear the goal in a lot of these is to be just like your upline do what your upline does a lot of times that includes wearing what they wear acting how they act and just taking part in who they are and losing who you are. Promoting an us against them mentality in this way means that should cult members disagree with any of the actions or mantras of their group, they are unlikely to voice them for fear of alienation. Wow, we see that in MLMs, it's us versus them for a lot of them. Everyone who disagrees with their thoughts, their quote unquote facts that aren't actually facts and what they believe is cut off, pushed out, and they give a label to those people of bully, hater, ignorance, whatever it is. A lot of them label anti-MLM now since that's become such a big deal. Continuing on with reading, over time, suppressing these emotions leads to the stubborn irrationality many therapists experience among cult members as well as their trauma. But how? The brain is usually considered to be in two parts, right? We have our right side and we have our left side. The right side is more focused on emotions and the left side is more focused on logic and where language is processed. You have an integration between these two called a horizontal integration. It is super important for putting feelings into words to reduce the emotional charge and communicate them to others appropriately. The lack of outlet for emotion in this way often allows it to spiral into trauma as the emotional logical connection in the brain becomes rusty and emotions circulate in the brain unchecked. The brain is also integrated vertically from top to bottom. How well this integration happens decides how well we can process thoughts, reasons, judgments, and perceptions as well as how integrated our feelings, emotions, and instincts are with each other. Without proper exercising of this vertical connection, people are either cut off from their feelings or unable to think clearly and make rational decisions, thus making them both highly suggestible and emotionally vulnerable. Let me explain this, because you might be going, Julie Jo, what are you doing? This is like anatomy, blah, blah, blah. It's important because MLMs use things like thought stopping techniques to stop negative, is what they call it, thoughts in their brain. They try to stop these thoughts that can be logical and help them really think the vertical and the horizontal way that they're supposed to. You're supposed to think through things. But in MLMs, oftentimes, and in this video, I see it very apparently, they don't want that for you. Anything negative, and by negative, that means anything against the MLM is wrong and needs to be stopped. As cults tend to discourage and severely punish those who question their leaders or practices, they tend to prevent both the vertical and horizontal integration from happening. This means that negative emotions are more likely to get stuck eventually surfacing as trauma. While critical thinking and reasoning are suppressed, we see that in MLMs all the time. Mentally incapacitating their members in this way allows a strict following mentally to flourish as suppressing emotional processing and critical thinking not only keeps them vulnerable, but also unquestioning of their leader. So a lot of what we just read leads to this next point I want to cover, which is cult indoctrination. If you watched a few of my videos in the last few months, you know that I like to call things like their trainings, their personal growth stuff that they're told to do and, and made to do essentially, if they want to quote unquote better themselves, I call that indoctrination. And this is going to cover that idea of indoctrination. 
So a destructive cult uses countless techniques to get its members to stay, commit themselves, and take part in what may be harmful activities. The sum of these techniques constitutes what some people call mind control. It's also known as thought reform, brainwashing, and coercive persuasion. And it involves a systematic breakdown of a person's sense of self. Please let me know and leave your commentary below throughout the video, but especially if you're someone who feel like you lost yourself in an MLM, I want to hear what was your experience? How, do you feel like you can relate to some of the things that we're talking about? And then of course, when we watch the video, buckle up and let's hear the commentary fly because you're going to hear mine and I know, I know, I've watched this video. Y'all are going to have a ton to say and it's totally valid. So thought reform like I mentioned earlier, is actually an umbrella term for a number of manipulative tactics used to get people to do something they wouldn't otherwise do. That's why I believe when they say mindset, they mean thought reform. The concept of thought reform itself is a controversial one. Some say it's mere propaganda designed to scare people away from new religious and political movements. But most psychologists believe that cult brainwashing techniques, which are similar to techniques used in prisoner interrogation, do change a person's thought process. In cult recruiting and indoctrinations, these techniques include deception, isolation, induced dependency, and dread. So let's cover those really quick and kind of talk about how they fit into the multi-level marketing space. With deception, the cult tricks new recruits into joining the group and committing themselves to a cause or lifestyle they don't fully understand. Perfectly said when you're talking about cults in general, obviously, but multi-level marketing companies too. And by that, I mean the groups that are within them. They say you can earn while you learn. They make things difficult to understand unless you've been in for a long time, including their compensation plan and their income disclosure statements. It's very wordy. They use a lot of word salad to misguide you and mislead you into thinking something that it's not. And the only thing you really have to go off of is what the cult leader or the person that you're talking to says it is. So you don't fully understand and that is deceptive. You do not have informed consent in this. And under this, here are some points that I think that they wrote down that fit well. Cults mislead new recruits and members as to the true expectations and activities of the group. Cults may hide any signs of illegal, immoral, or hyper-controlling practices until the recruit has fully immersed him or herself or their self in the group. A cult leader may use members' altered consciousness induced by activities like meditation, tanting, or drug use to increase vulnerability to suggestion. The next one that we're going to talk about is isolation. This is such an important one. I mean, all of them are, but when you think about it, we've seen a lot of these top leaders in MLM say, cut them off. If they're not supporting your business, they don't support you. When in reality, we know that that's not true. So a lot of people, including myself, have cut off their best friends, their family members, and so on. Cults cut off members from the outside world to produce intense introspection, confusion, loss of perspective, and distorted, and distorted sense of reality. And that's interesting because I say a lot of times that these people don't live in reality, and I know a lot of you say that as well, because they don't live in our reality. The members of the cult become the person's only social contact and feedback mechanism. Cults may not allow unsupervised contact with the outside world. In this way, there's no chance for a reality check or validation of a new member's concerns regarding the group. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that they're going to indoctrinate you at the very beginning saying a lot of people are going to say what you're doing is wrong and they're going to use religion, of course, to do it as well by saying God has you on this path. Some people are going to think what you're doing is wrong. It's because they're ignorant, so don't listen to them. So they're already cutting off the thoughts of when someone close to them is saying, hey, I don't think this is a good idea. It's like, nope, I already knew you were going to say that. Sorry. And they don't think about why their loved one is explaining to them why this is a bad idea. These people have already set them up in a way and isolated their thoughts from even opening up to someone else's opinion. Cults typically instill the belief that outsiders or non-cult members are dangerous and wrong, which I've talked about that briefly in this video already. Then we have induced dependency. Cults demand absolute unquestioning devotion, loyalty, and submission. A cult member's sense of self is systematically destroyed. Ultimately, feelings of worthlessness and evil become associated with independence and critical thinking, and feelings of warmth and love become associated with unquestioning submission. The leader typically controls every minute of the member's waking time. There is no free time to think or analyze. And you might go, Chili Joe, I just don't believe that that's true. However, 
I experienced this in a multi-level marketing company. The thought that when you're on, you're on your phone anyway, you might as well be doing something for your business is constant. Anytime you're on your phone, you instantly feel like you need to do something for your business. You're always watching trainings. You're always reading self-help books that they recommend and only that they recommend. You're doing the income producing activity. You're preparing for whatever, trying to get people to join it. It's an all day thing that is completely exhausting. And while you are the one actively doing those things, this is looked at as a good thing. You are applauded, loved bombed for doing this kind of thing. And that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you doing it is the fact that they, while they don't force you, they push for it. They say, good job. They give you I received lots of gifts when I was in the MLM for doing things like that. They want you to send a picture of your IPA every day to them. And I even did that for my downline. You send me a picture of your IPA every day, you know, you'll get this or you'll get this reward. And I experienced that for my upline and so on and so forth. You're actually going to hear in this video about how some people do that. They are not even allowed in certain groups unless they're willing to do things like that which in my opinion is making them dependent on that person, their ideas, what they think should happen and allowing that person in general to control their day. Any doubts, assertiveness, or remaining ties to the outside world are punished by the group through criticism, guilt, and alienation. Questions and doubts are systematically turned around so that the doubter feels wrong, worthless, evil for questioning. The members loved again when he, she, or they renounces those doubts and submits to the will of the leader. The member may be deprived of adequate sustenance and or sleep so the mind becomes muddled. I think that a lot of these MLM diets, of course, we know that they are not good for your body. They are exhausting. And the only way you keep yourself going is using their like idea of um, an energy drink or, you know, just continuing caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. A lot of people aren't getting the sustenance they need because they're too low in calories. They're using products that are keeping them going and they're ignoring warning signs from their body to stop, pause, relax, breathe. And it's exhausting. I was constantly exhausted in my multi-level marketing company because every day I was working on getting to that dream that they pushed for me that they thought that I could reach, that they sh told me I could reach if I do what I'm supposed to do. The leader may randomly alternate praise and love with scorn and punishment to keep the member off balance and confused and instill immense self-doubt. The leader may offer occasional gifts and special privileges to encourage continued submission. I've seen this recently with a trip that a leader took her downline on and I feel like that leader and many others use this specific thing to have control, continued control over their downline. The last one is dread and it says once complete dependence is established, the member must retain the leader's good favor or else his life, her life or their life falls apart. The leader may punish doubt or insubordination with physical or emotional trauma. Once all ties to the outside world have been cut, the member feels like his only family or her only family or their only family is the group that he, she, or they is the group and they have nowhere else to go. And to finish this conversation off before we start the video, I want to talk about how specifically MLMs do this. We've I've covered it a little with my opinions, but Dr. Stephen Hassan has talked in this post on Psychology Today, posted January 14th of 2022, so a little over a year ago, but he says multi-level marketing groups operate much like cults. MLMs manipulate, recruit, and maintain members the same as cults do. Most people know that certain religious and political cult groups manipulate and control members. That's very obvious. If you have been or seen any documentary or anything like that, we see this. We know that there are other types of groups like MLMs that use deception and coercive influence to build their cult and to get people to join. So we know that according to the FTC, a whopping 99% of recruited sellers lose money in an MLM. That means just 1% actually turn a profit. An article on magnifymoney.com reporting a survey involving 1,049 multi-level marketing scheme participants from a variety of MLMs found that most people were making less than 70 cents an hour. 
before deducting business cost. And 60% of participants said they made less than $500 in the past five years. Let's talk about these techniques that MLMs, people in MLMs, top leaders use to form this coercive persuasion, this brainwashing technique which is also known as thought reform, which again is what I think they do when they mean mindset. To understand how MLMs recruit and maintain participants requires examining them as cults. Most MLMs use tactics of recruitment, financial manipulation, and the promise of large profits. But like all cults, they employ thought control, magical thinking, thought stopping, and self-blame. Failures are blamed directly on the consultants for lack of hard work, or competence. The group has no accountability and the leaders do not allow questions or criticism. Massachusetts lawyer Douglas Brooks, an expert on marketing frauds, has said of MLMs, you're trained to avoid people who question whether this is a viable business or not, which is exactly the same technique that cults use. They try to isolate you from people who question your belief system. Recruiters can be very convincing. They use deception in all forms, withholding vital information, distorting information, and just outright lying oftentimes to ensnare people have not learned about cult mind control techniques. There is no such cultish recruiting in a regular sales job. There's no cultish recruiting anywhere where it's like a sales job other than like MLM and frauds and whatnot. Affiliate marketing, no recruiting, no cultish recruiting as Dr. Hassan puts it. Social Aspects of recruitment often involve large seminars or other types of scripted events. Successful distributors, they are a very small minority, present their inspiring rags to riches stories, which of course a lot of us have heard their why story. You are going to hear some in this video that we're about to watch. Couples may appear together, the husband talking proudly about providing for his family, his wife swearing their marriage has become so much more fun and loving. When product distributors experience doubt and ask questions, they are subjected to emotional manipulation. Pressure to stay in the MLM group also comes from within. Social media plays a large part in selling him the recruiting process. Distributors spend a great deal of time, effort, and money to establish their presence on social media sites. The social media community is a source of support. Giving it up is frightening. People have often recruited close friends and family into the organization and suffer a great deal of shame and guilt when it all falls apart. There is a legitimate fear of retaliation from the organization itself. And the last thing I want to cover is this, the topic he talked about of informed consent. Dr. Hassan says, I believe that every individual has the right to make their own decisions. Individuals and organizations should be free to recruit. What is potentially wrong and should be illegal is undue influence over a recruit's decision-making process. The recruitment and retention tactics of MLMs are prime examples of undue influence. They rely on false representations, appeals to emotion, and very limited disclosure of the reality of multi-level marketing. Informed consent should be the driving force behind development and enforcement of regulation. Only then can freely and educated decisions be made. So we started kind of big, right? How cults change your mind to the indoctrination part of it, to how it is in MLMs. And I've kind of talked about that in each section, but now we're going to see it for ourselves. Before we watch it, I just have one more thing to say, and then we'll get started. The reason I specifically do videos covering top leaders and their actions are because that is who is recruiting and using cult tactics to build a downline and make money on them as you're going to see in this video, and as Dr. Hassan talked about. They leave out crucial information and push for their downline to not have informed consent, as we just said. I think it's important to cover their actions and what they say because it helps people understand and see what's really going on. What I do, and what a lot of other people do, helps inform those who aren't told the truth, which we see most people aren't. I know there is a tiny group of people who call themselves advocates that just recently spoke on the fact that they don't think top leaders or people who do terrible things in MLMs should be covered anymore. They believe it is strictly the company. The issue is the company is not the one recruiting. They are not the one using faith manipulation, mostly. Mane does a little bit. Hey Stu, I'm talking about you. The people who do this are the top leaders and some of those in the downline. 
They use these tactics to get people to join knowing they do not have informed consent. They use love bombing, thought stopping techniques, and self blame as a way to control the people in their and their actions. I am honestly very disappointed by these advocates who act as though the top leaders and downlines aren't hurting others. Being held accountable is difficult, especially when you've experienced it and it was hard for you to grasp. Just like we had to work through cognitive dissonance to see what was going on ourselves, and a lot of us in the anti-MLM genre have held ourselves accountable and even reacted to some of our own videos, these people have to be shown as examples of what we say goes on. In a cult, it's impossible to hold the beliefs accountable without holding those who enforce accountable as well. And those who enforce it are top leaders. People like Tony Van Schoik from On8, Cecilia Stoll from Arbonne, Krista Parney and Christina Smallwood from On8, John and Nadia Melton from Modere, Ashley Fryman and Skylar Lambert from Bella Grace, and Jesse Lee Ward from Prove It. These people have hurt others in so many ways using deceptive tactics they teach for others to use. That's where we shift over to the video we're going to watch today. It's a group of Young Living top leaders doing pretty much what we've talked about. This is an awesome example and I'm excited to read your comments below. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, let's get started. So I've spent the last three hours preparing this video and then filming that first part. And this video is long, okay? This video we're gonna watch is long, I am gonna speed it up. I'm also gonna have a snack, so if that bothers you, you can go. <laughs> Apparently some people don't like when I eat my videos. But if I'm gonna spend like five hours doing a video, you know, I want a snack. Also, these are so good. It's the popcorn. Why am I doing an ad for someone that's not paying me? Oh, because I don't care. The popcorners, uh, sweet chili. It's good, y'all. Okay, I'm not gonna bite this. I'm gonna wait until we get started. The downfall of Young Living, lots of wild stuff going on, and they're gonna kind of tell you that they're experiencing a lot of stress. And it's very interesting. Okay, so downfall of Young Living has been happening the past year and a half or so. I don't know too much about it and I didn't have enough time to look into it before this because I feel like it would have taken me a while. But I did tell you a little bit about it before and uh, you can go watch some of the videos on it. Listen, I understand if you have to do this video in two parts where you watch the first part and then you watch this part, but trust me, this is, this is worth it. I'm going to put it on 0.25 speed. 1.25. Imagine if I slowed it down to 0.25. We would be here for hours. Okay, 1.25. Here we go. Hi, guys. Do you all see me? Okay. Um, hello, hello. We are back for our third week here in Business Collective this week with some special guests. Um, tonight, we're excited to talk to you guys about team culture and momentum shifts. And um, we have been sharing some hard and heavy and honest things with you guys over the past couple of weeks. And tonight, Lacey, Emily, and myself brought on three special guests, um, Kimberly, Abby, and Megan to share with you all tonight. And we're so excited to have them with us. Um, and the reason that we invited them in is because we each have seen them show up for their teams through a year that was really, really hard <laughs> through the suck. They have been able to rise above and we're excited for you guys to hear from them tonight. Um, so I am going to introduce you guys to one of my dear friends and favorite people, Abby. Um, if you don't know her or follow her, I would encourage you to do so because, um, she is just such a light. And when I see Abby and when I see the way that she has led her team and loved her team, she's been with me almost since the beginning. I mean, maybe I was like silver or gold abs when you joined. Um, she is a leader who continues to walk worthy. She is a leader who is, is so consistent and who is so present for her team through ups and downs in the business, through ups and downs in her own life. This is love bombing right here. So just a heads up. Um, she has just been so faithful. And so when I was thinking about people who have just like persevered, Abby immediately came to my mind. Um, in fact, like in so really, really slow times in the business. I have seen her team come together more than ever. And so I asked her to come and just share a little bit about what this season has looked like for her and her team. And I'm going to turn it over to Abby now. So thank you for being here, Abs. Hi guys. I'm super excited to be here. I'm a little bit nervous, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to have my notes out here just 
actually, I think I'm going to do it this way. Um, so I have been with Danielle basically from the beginning. She was like a brand new silver and it was the most amazing time because I got to see her like really live this business out and show us by example, um, how to do all the things because none of us knew what we were doing and she just led, led us by example. And so it's been awesome watching her. It's been like six and a half years. It's crazy. Um, so I've been here for a very long time and, um, I love it. It's been life-changing for my family and, um, but the last few years have been challenging. Um, it's been very wild. It's been like a lot of highs and lows just in the world in general, in my personal life and in this business. And I think for the people in our business, um, it's been really wild. And so I think, yeah, it's, it's just been, it's been a lot. <laughs> it's been good. It's been crazy, but, um, I will say I, I come at this, um, I am a very like strong believer in Jesus. And that is like my anchor in everything that I do in business and motherhood in my life. And so that seeps into how I lead my team and, and how I speak. So that's going to be part of my conversation tonight. You know, we couldn't go through a young living video with awesome faith manipulation y'all. Come on now. Um, but I will say like, when I look at my team and I look at my business, um, from the beginning, I knew that it was the Lord that put this in front of me to, to go after. It was the weirdest thing ever to, I was the biggest anti-network marketing person ever. I've seen it done really gross and I was really against it, um, most of my life. And then, so for me to actually pursue this was, um, wild for me to even. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. Because if you were the biggest anti MLM or ever or whatever, you would be educated on why this is a bad decision. Unless you were just doing performative things. Right? If someone is a huge anti MLM person and then they join an MLM and let's say they created content before about anti MLM, they were just performative. They were just in it for views or whatever. If you are actually anti MLM, you were likely educated on why it's a horrible decision and would never join ever and step into it. But, um, but I knew I was supposed to do that. And the way that this whole business has gone, um, I just see God's hand in it all the way through. I prayed for a really strong team of women that love the Lord, um, first and foremost. And I've seen God actually, you know, piece by piece answer that prayer in really big and beautiful ways. Um, I love my team much. It has evolved a lot over the years. Um, a lot of people that were with me at the beginning are no longer with me anymore. And I have a fresh group of people. I also have people that have been with me from the beginning. So it's kind of a mix of everybody, but, um, like the only way to even, in how many, how many of them are still with you from the beginning? I have a feeling that not many are understand how we're still standing is just like God's grace. Because if you've been around here for a while, you know, it's been crazy. And, um, so anyways, I just have to say that, but I, something that has been a huge shift for me that has been a huge anchor for me in this business has been realizing. So there was a lot of stuff that happened in the last couple of years in the world, but also in our business, a lot of lies were being said, a lot of craziness was happening. And so in that process, there was fear like spread in insane amounts. And I remember getting- They weren't lies though. That's the issue is at least when it comes to like the seed to seal stuff with their products and different things like that, they aren't lies. Those actually happened. But being a deceptive, in my opinion, cult leader that these women are, again, that's my opinion, but I believe that they are, they're going to lie to their downline to act as though what happened to them was awful and that they're gonna prevail right? They're going to prevail through this. It's kind of like the mindset I think that they're going to push. I think to a point of realizing like, wait a minute, I think it's just our mindset. Like the business is just as incredible. The products are just as incredible. The community is just as incredible. The corporate staff, the company itself, all of it is still amazing. So what is different? You know, the only thing that was actually different was our mindset and that was impacting other people's mindsets and it just trickled down. And so it became this like, you know, in a worldwide pandemic, like it was also infecting our team, uh, but in a different way with mindset. And so once I realized that, I felt like that was such a like aha moment for me to recognize like nothing's wrong with our products. Nothing's wrong with our corporate staff. Nothing's wrong with our business in general. Like it's such a strong um, company that's been around for so long. And there's all these mindset, I think is a personal thing. I think as a group, you can change your mindset. However, it's still personal, but as a group to all change into the same mindset, is not mindset training. It is thought reform. And that's what I believe that they're doing. All these things popping up and like, try this brand new thing. And like, that's the most unstable thing you could jump into. I'm going to stay where it's steady and where there's like deep roots. And so when I realized like all of these things, the, the bones of our business have not changed, the products haven't changed. I was like, oh my gosh, it's just our mindset. Like that's it. And so we can change that. We actually have 
authority over our thinking, over our minds, like we can do this. Right. Um, so in, in all of that, I feel like fear was so contagious. It is so contagious and people were just eating it up. I mean, about everything. Right. But especially like in our business, I was seeing like people being knocked out over and over and over again. And then it was like, wait, belief is just as contagious. When I started this business with Danielle, she had like huge amounts of belief that she just gave out to us all the time. Like she was just handing out like candy. And so we were eating that up. And so there was this like momentum and this fire and this, like everyone was all in, we all were doing whatever she said. We were all doing it because we believed whatever she said. And then we saw things happen. If she said we could do it, we believed her and then we did it. And so belief is just as powerful, if not more, but we have to overcome fear. We have to stop looking at what everyone else is saying and just decide, do we want this or do we not want this? And I wanted this. Yeah. What she's saying is you have to stop being informed of what's going on and close your ears and just look forward. Listening to what other people saying is not always a bad thing. I think oftentimes, especially when it's people who care about you or like resources or people who spread facts and are knowledgeable in a certain thing, I think it's important to listen to. Some people obviously you shouldn't listen to, but like in general, listening and hearing what others have to say is important. Um. So for me personally, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for, um, strong women, women that value hard work, um, that show up boldly on mission and accomplish whatever God has put on their hearts to do. And I tell my team this all the time, but like selling lavender is not my mission in life. It's not my um, greatest calling. Um, but it helps to fund the things that I feel very, very called to that. I feel God has actually created me on purpose for purpose to do certain things. And everything costs money. Even if you have the most humble of dreams of like, I'm going to live off the land and live simple and you know, whatever that's expensive, like living off the land, having like your own property, that's expensive. So even if you feel like it's a super humble dream, they all cost money. And so what is it that God has put on your heart? Um, so for me, I, I want to connect with other women that aren't bent by culture, by algorithms, by what is popular, by what everybody else is saying. I want women that are solid and who they know God made them to be. Um, I want women that want more in life that are willing to like fight for their family, fight for their future fight for the dreams that God has put on their heart. Um, I want women that are willing to use their voice to set other people free. And I believe that we can do that in this business. Um, so I have to actually, but not too much because the FDA called out about how much y'all are using your voices to set people free. And it seems that it's pretty deceptive. Let's just look at a quick example. Again, this is behind MLM and they actually put people, their consultant number and what they say in this, it says, Molly Buckley Stillman, consultant number whatever, claimed that Young Living's frankincense oil can be used to ease symptoms of discomfort from urinary tract infections and yeast infections and could also be used as homemade sunscreen. She also said lemon essential oil can be used to treat kidney stones, seasonal sniffles, and runny noses as an, as an acne treatment, urinary tract infections, and to reduce inflammation. Again, it, there's other things too, like but that that's just an example of you might have used your voices a little too much to free people because you're stepping in the wrong territory and the FDA is letting you know. Speak that out consistently if that's what I'm looking for. And I have to actually live it out consistently in front of people so that people know that I'm serious. So when I'm talking to people, whether it's in private messages or it's in person, or I'm just sharing it online or I'm talking to family or whatever it is, I want what's consistent. I want to speak out what I want to see. And then whatever people do with that information is up to them, but I don't want it to be because I'm not saying something. And so I'm actually looking for a specific type of, um, not personality. Like you can have every personality. I think this business is for anyone. Like not everyone's going to do it and not everyone's willing to do it, but it, anyone can do it if they apply themselves. Um, so I have to speak those words out and I have to live those words out. I know that the trend right now, and it's a little bit, you know, goes against what a lot of people I hear are saying, but the trend right now is just to kind of put the business out there and say, like, even if you just want to make a little bit extra a month, you can do this. Right. Um, and so we hear that a lot. And so I hear that in a lot of language, even if you just want to make a little side income. Um, but I personally, like, I'm not looking for that for myself and I'm not looking for that for other women. Again, if they want to come to this and they just want a side hustle, that is fine. But I, when I came to this business, I signed up with Casey. If Casey had small dreams, small vision and hid behind her own voice, I wouldn't have joined her. Like she had big dreams and big goals and she was doing something. And I saw that and I was like, that's the type of person that I want to follow. I, that's what I want. Like, I want someone that knows where they're going. So if she played small or didn't dream big, I wouldn't have joined her. I would have looked for someone else. It wasn't that I wasn't there. I just, I was looking for the right person. And I believe that there's more people out there like that. And so when I'm speaking it out, I I'm not speaking small and saying like, even if it's just a little bit, again, if they want to do just a little bit, that's awesome. But for me to 
take this all the way, which is what I want to do. And I want it to not just go all the way, but like stay all the way. Um, I want it to be strong and sustainable. So I need other women like on mission, recognizing what this can be for their families and that they're in it. They're all in for the long haul. The girls that I've seen come in that just are like, I just want a side hustle. They're out. As soon as it gets shaky, they're out. Let's talk about this idea that you can make a little bit of money. You can't even make a little bit of money. So for her to even push that to say, no, let's say they can make a lot of money is just awful. I mean, absolutely horrible. Let's look at Young Living's income disclosure statement, actually. Young Living's income disclosure statement simply tells us that she's saying a lie to people. An associate, which is 64.1% of the company, has a median of $0 a year. A star, which is 25% of the company, has a median of $233 a year. So we're at almost 90% of the company having an annual income of $233, not including products that they buy. So what she's saying is wrong. What I love about this is even at the bottom, it says all brand partners. So it's taking into consideration every person. It's 100% of the brand partners. The lowest is $0. The highest is $2.8 million a year. The average is $881. And the median, the middle of 100%, the middle of every single distributor is $23 a year. So no, Abby, what you're saying is an absolute lie and false and extremely deceptive. Informed consent people. Like it's not, it doesn't mean anything to them. They're going to find another side hustle until that doesn't work. And then they're going to find another side hustle. And so for me, I'm, I'm specifically looking for women that are willing to hang with it for the long haul and actually see like, this is bigger than just selling lavender. It's bigger than just a trend. Like this is generational impact. Um, and I want to do this for my family and for other women. So that's what I'm looking for. And so that's what I'm speaking out consistently. Um, so for me, it's, it's been this process of like, and this is something that I'm, I'm working with my team consistently with. We even have like a separate group that I walk people through this. Um, but it's knowing clearly, like, who are you truly? Who are you outside of culture and trends and what's popular and all that stuff. But like, who are you specifically, um, in your unique giftings? Who are you? Why are you actually here? And this is all stuff that's like basic mentorship stuff. When I first started that Danielle would like talk to us about. So this is like nothing new, um, but it's knowing who you are. It's knowing why deeply why you're here. Danielle will always say like, be so specific with your dreams. And we've watched that with Danielle. She's been like crazy specific. And then when she accomplishes it, it feels like we, we all feel, at least in my opinion, it all feels like we all won because we saw her speak those dreams out. She spoke out that cabin like a long time ago. Um, she spoke out building a house for her, her parents, retiring her dad, all these things. So when that happens, we're like, Oh my gosh, I think we all won because we saw her speak it out before it happened and then it happened. And so when we're specific with things and we know clearly why we're here, we're going to stay in it. If we don't really know, um, we're going to go to the next trend. We're going to go to the next like person that's saying something crazy out there that we're like, Oh, it must be true because she has this many followers. Um, people with a lot of followers, it doesn't mean that they're honest. Right. And so here's the deal with this big, crazy dream that Danielle got to live out. No one else, but her one. It doesn't matter what she says. Nobody else won. Nobody else's dream came true because of Danielle's dream becoming true. Nobody else won anything except a lot of them became even more indoctrinated into the MLM thinking that they would also live their dream. Why do you think a bunch of people have left? Well, there's multiple reasons from what I can tell, but also the fact that first off, their income disclosure statement tells us pretty simply that most people aren't going to make any money and will actually lose money. But also that these big dreams that these top people are living, the very, very minuscule amount of them living, let me be really clear, actually, less than 1%, 0.9% of the company has a median of $13,300 a year. Uh, the next one is gold, 0.2% of the company, $45,600 a year. And then we have 0.1%, $117,957 a year, and then less than 0.1% of the company that's left. People aren't making money. And the people that are, are literally less than 1% of the company. Less than 1% of the company. So when Danielle lives her big happy dreams, people are going to dive even deeper into the MLM thinking that will happen for them when in reality, it won't. Right? And so it doesn't like, you have to actually know, like in your heart. And so why are you here? What are you doing this for? Not because of somebody else, but because who you are. Right. And then you have to know what you're going to do about it and the, the culture that you want to create, um, what you want to happen in your business. 
having that vision for your team. It's so important to know it for yourself and then to teach that it's that whole duplication. Like you have to know it, who you are, why you're here, what you're going to do about it, and then teach other people to know who they are, why they're here and what they're going to do about it. Um, I feel like if you, if you don't know deeply why you're here, you're not going to see the miracles happen. You're going to quit before you actually witness miracles. Royal Crown Diamond, especially for someone where I came from, no social media, no influence. I was anti-people um, going into a, a people business. Like that makes no sense at all. Um, but I was very like, unless I you know, married you or made you, I don't want to talk to you. And But I had to start talking to people. And so I had to get to that place of like, okay, this has to be like an act of God because there's no way that I can build this. There's no way. And so I just started praying um, and just asking the Lord to like help help me figure this out, help me find the right people. Um, and in the Bible, like Jesus is about to like do a miracle and he, he sends out the people that don't believe. And then he performs the miracle, right. When he's like healing the little girl or, or the sick person or whatever, he sends the people that don't believe out. He created an environment of faith and we can do that same thing. Like I want to be in the room when the miracle happens. I don't want to be out because I, because I doubt it. I feel very called to this. And so I want to be in the room when the miracle happens. And the thing with this business, because the bones of this business are still. Jesus doesn't allow scammers in the room. Okay. Also that story about Jesus healing the girl and telling people to leave has nothing to do with what you're talking about nothing and for you to even like try to equate this your MLM and Jesus's miracle is just like girl sit down work on that ego because it's a little too big for your britches <laughs> of this business are still so freaking good um you're gonna see people rise even if it's been a hard season I'm very determined to rise. I tell my team that all the time. Like we are the team that's going to rise. If there's going to be a team rising. Like we're going to do it. We have to do it. And I feel like that, is it a bulldog? It's one of those dogs that like grips on and never lets go. That's me in this business. Like I'm not, I'm not going down. Okay. <laughs> like we're going to figure this out. And so I want to be in the room when the miracle happens. It's going to be, it has to be, because it has to be a mindset shift for all of us, for us to figure this out. Um, so when you start to see people rise, like, are you going to be the person in the room or out of the room? Cause it's going to happen. Like, it's just this business is, is amazing. It's going to work again. We just have to fix our mindset. Um, when we were in the thick of all the craziness, there's people walking away and there's so much craziness being said on the internet in general, it's crazy. But, um, with this business, there are so many people saying stuff that were like, what are they even talking about? And why are people believing them? Like it was mind blowing. Um, but fear is very contagious. And so in that process, we saw a lot of people leave a lot of people that, um, we thought were like forever people that were not forever people. And, you know, in that process, I remember feeling really discouraged. And my husband was like, Abs, God is just removing the people that are not part of your promise. And it was like this release for me of like, oh yeah, okay. God is still in control. We, we still have this. I still have vision for this. I've never lost vision, no matter what has happened in my life. Like I see this as um, a way to accomplish the things that I feel called to do. And so I haven't quit. I haven't stopped. I haven't lost belief. I've been discouraged and I've been knocked down a hundred percent. My question is, why do you have to do this to make extra money to do what you feel called to do? Like, why can't I just work at the hospital and do the job that I quote unquote feel called to do and not work an MLM? What if I, I don't care? Like the thing is, it's the idea of you're going to make extra money just by simply doing this throughout your day. You can have a full-time job and do this and make extra money, but that's not true though. If that was true, this would be a different conversation, but it's not. People aren't making extra money. They're actually losing money. So why would I join and lose money when I could just simply do what I felt called to do without having to do any of this? I think that honestly, it's just people wanting people to make money for them. I think it's people wanting people to make money for them because that's what people do in MLMs. They make money for their uplines and the top one, the one at the top gets the most bang for their buck. They get a cut of everything just about it seems like it's not like a catalyst for her to do what she's called to do. It seems like it's a catalyst for her to not have to actually work and just allow people to do it for her. That's my opinion. Feel free to comment yours below and leave your commentary throughout. But um, I, I know where we're going. And even if I lose everyone, I know I can start over again, right? I am determined for this. And so that was like peace for me to recognize, like, even if people are walking away, God is just re- um, orchestrating the room, right? I'm expecting to see miracles happen. So he's just reorchestrating the room. The people that don't have the faith in it, they don't need to be there. We're just going to bring in the people that have the faith for it. Um, so a few of the things that I did in the last year, well, the last couple of years, it's been wild, you guys. Um, first I have just determined to keep my eyes on 
the Lord. Um, again, I'm speaking from a very Christian perspective and I know not everybody has the same faith as me, but for myself personally, it's the anchor in everything that I do. And so I've had to just keep my eyes fixed on the Lord and off trends and experts. Okay. And a little secret about experts, the experts are not the experts. Okay. There are a lot of people that just regurgitate information, um, banking on your pain point and making money off of it. Oh, I almost, I almost bit on my, I almost choked on my spit because she just said that they do what she actually does. She said experts, they aren't experts. Um, yeah, they are. Like if they're legit experts, you should probably listen to them. And you just said that they find your pain points and make money off of you. No, that's what you do, Abby. <laughs> I can't believe she said that. I cannot believe she said that. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it caught me off guard to be completely honest. I've seen this but once and I did it on like 1.75 speed. So it was like zoom in. That was wild. Abby, I have a feeling she's anti-vax. I just get that vibe of experts aren't experts. Um, yes, they are. Like, what? Like, you're not an expert, so why, how do you know experts aren't experts? Oh, God, I'm feeling like a brat right now. I'm feeling very bratty and very sassy. I've been in calls with these people where that's how they teach their people. That's how they, they, you know, and yes, there are some wonderful people out there. I'm not saying everyone that's an expert is not, but a lot of the people that I see online, they put it in their bio, they start charging you as the expert and they're not like I've, I've known these people like some of them have come from my own team <laughs> I guess she might be talking about MLM coaches but also I feel like it was like underhanded on my point as well bless it and I'm like whoa like <laughs> they're the the network marketing expert and they're, they, they don't have any success in network marketing so be careful with the experts right so for me just like a good pastor would do this he would say instead of what's trending in Christianity I'm going to ask God, like to give me wisdom for my people specifically, what do they need to hear? Not what's popular happening. Right. And so in this business, I want to do the same thing. Like I can go to like, what's trending, what's popular, what's everybody doing. But if it's not going to actually impact the hearts of my team, then it's going to be wasted time. And I don't want to waste time. I want to use my time wisely so that I can spend the rest of my time doing other things and being a mama and all the other things that I want to do. So I just kept going to the Lord, asking the Lord for wisdom and leading these women. Um, I spent the beginning of this last year, um, in 2022, um, I, we lost a lot of people, a lot of good people. And so the people remaining, I had some like front leaders that had been with me for a long time. And I just felt like at the beginning of the year, uh, my husband and I were thinking of starting a leg. We hadn't done a leg of his before. And we were thinking about it. And, and before we did that, we just decided like, I think that I want to go back in and just love on my leaders and let them feel seen and heard and valued. And like, I want to be present with them. And so we just spent some time. Sometimes it was a month with one leader. Sometimes it was a couple months in their team, just really like investing in them because I don't want to just run to this without them. Like I really like no man left behind as much as I can possibly do myself. I want to bring these women with me and I want them knowing that. And so we spent the first, you know, beginning of the year, um, really just pursuing different parts of my organization and loving on those women, investing in them. Um, I also, started some different groups. So I had, I have my business group that's for anyone on my team, but I also, I needed just for my own heart's sake, I needed a safe place. Um, because I felt like there was so much, um, walk away. There was people being dishonest. There was a lot of fear being spread. Um, there was some that felt like betrayal. There was a lot of stuff happening during that time. And I wanted to step forward, but I also felt like I don't know every person in this group anymore. Like I don't know their motives and I need to feel safe as a leader to lead boldly. So I started like different groups and kind of walked like the requirement for those groups is like, you have to walk through a week long group to get into this group of being vulnerable, being honest, sharing. Like it was a very like, um, intimate group. And so I've done this for five months now and just taking small groups through to kind of get them into this other group. That's much more like open and um, authentic and leadership and personal growth and all that stuff in a safe place. I needed that for my heart. So if you've got I feel like that's a red flag. Anyone else? Can someone explain to me why I feel like that's a red flag? Cause I can't, because I can't explain it to you. So if you can explain to me why that's a red flag and why I feel that way, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Gone through the ringer with people and you just need a safe place. I know Lacey's talked about having different, you know, threads going and renewing those threads, whatever it is that it looks like, but just having that safe place with people that actually want in, they actually want to be part of this team was important for me to know. Um, I started at the end of the year, last year, I started a husband leg and 
part of it was for me just to do it. The other part was, um, I wanted to show my team what it looked like to like step back in fully. Like I've done this business. I've been enrolling. I'm not a high enroller, but I'm a consistent enroller. And so I've always been there. I've always been present, but I wanted to show them like, it's possible again. And I'm going to start over and I'm going to build this thing with my husband. Um, well with me, he's cheering me on. <laughs> um, and I'm going to do it. And I had this goal of like, I'm going to do it. It was like the 20th of November. And I'm like, I'm going to run, I'm going to enroll him and we're going to run to senior star. I always tell people push, 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 but I need to show them that like, I know what it's like to push and even years into it, like I'm going to push myself. And so that was one of the most exciting moments for me. I'm just pushing for senior star. We're not buying it. Like I just want, she said she enrolled him and then push, push, push. I wonder if she means like she did some stacking. You know what I mean? Sips tea, except it's not tea. It's liquid IV link in bio. It's one of them knowing like I'm in this with you and I want them knowing it's still possible. It's still just as exciting as when I first started. It's still possible. You still can achieve these ranks. It has not died. The business is not dead. I heard so many people say it's dead. It's not dead. Our hearts, maybe were dead. <laughs> Our mindset was dead, but it, the business itself has not died. Um, and then just the encouragement to just to have vision for what you want. If you've lost vision, um, take time, give yourself permission to step aside for a minute and just breathe and not rush it and say like, what vision do I have for my team? Because the Bible says without vision, the people perish. If we don't have vision, we can't give that to our team and then they're lost. Um, maybe like don't use it out of context. She just says like they're all going to perish if they don't have vision. Girl, please. I keep saying girl, homie, sit down. I, what are you saying? Wow. So we have to have clear vision, um, clear goals so that we can tell that to our team. Um, I'm determined to be a team that rises right now because the bones of this structure, the bones of this business have not changed. It's still just as amazing. The opportunity is actually better than it was when I started. Um, the products are amazing. The community, everything is so incredible. Um, it's just our mindset. And so if we as leaders can switch our mindset and belief, full belief, and then pass that out instead of fear, um, it's so contagious. And, and anyways, we can still do it. <laughs> I've seen it. And um, okay, that's all. Is it my turn? Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, okay. I am so pumped to share my girl with y'all. Um, this is Kimberly. She's the best person ever. And why I love Kimberly so much is not only have I seen her just completely rise up in the last year when everyone like took off and ran, it felt like, um, not everybody, um, but me and her as a person, and she'll tell you, and she'll smile that we are pretty much complete opposite on so many things yet we mesh so perfectly. I've never felt judged by her. I have felt like she, um, loves me for who I am and is encouraging me without shaming me. And just, she's just a solid human. So Kimberly, um, lives in California and what have just seen her as a leader is she just shows up for them. And not only does she show up for them, she has built a beautiful in-person community. Well, she already had a beautiful in-person community. And when she said yes, to this, this business, her people didn't even have to blink an eye. They were just whatever she was doing, they were doing, and they are amazing. I had the opportunity to go with her team to Arizona last spring. And it was just, just so fun, you guys. And, um, I love her because she is someone that I feel is like 20 times smarter than me and more capable than me, but she comes just like humbly and just says like, Hey, how can I do this better? She is always willing to learn and grow. Even today she was, um, or the other day she said like, Hey, I want to get on a strategy call. And so the ability that her, she just wants to grow beyond and be a better leader for her team. She's, she's all, she's a leader to me, you guys. Like she's sending, sends me podcasts and me just like all this encouragement all the time. And I'm just blown away by her and how she leads just so beautifully. And I'm really excited for y'all to hear from her. She's a one, I'm an eight. She's very much a green. I'm very much a not. And we just have this like beautiful partnership. So without further ado, Kimberly. I have been in bed all day with a fever. So Kim, babe, I'm going to need you to fix that light. <laughs> Cause like, I don't want to look at it. Why is that light in my face? Not just me being picky, but <laughs> please. I, my notes are um, trash. <laughs> so, oh man, I just love you guys. You guys are just such red leaders. We are so blessed to be under these powerful women. Um, I'm going to give you just a little bit of background. I am a hairstylist. I have owned my own business for over a decade, which has actually helped me run this young living business. Um, I definitely feel like you need to have a foundation for your business. Um, because you cannot build a strong house on a rocky foundation, right? So what I lean into is purpose. I do believe in our why. 
and I believe in results, but if you don't have a purpose behind what you're doing, a purpose for getting yourself out of bed and um, running your business, you just won't do it. Um, you also have to have a plan if you are willy nilly and like Lacey does fly by the seat of her pants, but she's amazing. She's very gifted in that. I am not. So I have to have a plan. Um, also staying current um, with the comp plan, with what's going on in marketing, with the trends. I saw Gingers and Oil, Kendra, post that she- Kim is uh, giving Abby a big old smack in the face because Kim is saying the opposite of what Abby said. Abby was like crapping all over trends and Kim was like, use those trends. Interesting. Uh, hmm. I'm old and I'm not on TikTok. And I just was like, I'm old too. And I'm not on TikTok either, but maybe I should be. So just staying current. Um, and also you have to be invested. Um, the hardest thing to give in this world is your time. And you have to be invested with your time. Um, I believe a money investment is way easier than giving my time. So those are the foundations that um, my work wife, Nicole, and I came up with. They say investment, but I feel like they don't know what that means. <laughs> like an investment means you get something back. I'll just define investment from dictionary, from the Oxford Languages Dictionary. Okay, it says the action or process of investing money for profit or material result. So you're going to get something back. But if you invest in this, whether it's money or time, you're not going to get any of that back. You especially don't get time back. And very obviously, the majority of people won't get money back. Like they say investment, but it just seems like they have no idea what that means. And they're using it incorrectly. Also, I kind of feel bad for Kim. She said she has like a fever all day and she doesn't sound very good. Like she, she seems like she doesn't feel well. I feel bad that she has to be on here and do this. With, um, and yeah, my team is just so special. Um, I kind of feel like the dip of 2021 and 2022, like I kind of was like mama bear and I huddled everybody in and was like, I don't care what's going on around us. Like, I honestly didn't get into the drama of any of what was going on. I kind of just sheltered everyone and was like, we're just going to keep going. And, and I kind of had to have blinders on for that. So I don't feel like I struggled. That's that's a bit of information control because they should probably have known what was going on. You should, well, may, she would never say anything, but like you probably shouldn't do that. They need to know what's happening in the company that they're a part of. They don't know. They aren't informed and they should be. Struggled. Um, I felt like I walked. I felt like I jogged and now it's time to run, but I really feel like I stayed focused and, um, took care of my team in that way. I feel like um very blessed to have a team that is in person that I actually can go and sit down and have coffee with and call. And I'm invested in these women that have chosen to say yes. And I just, um, I think that it's really special. And so if you're getting bogged down by like, oh, I need to make reels. I need to show up on social media. Um, hit up your hairstylist, ask her to put a diffuser at her station, um, connecting with realtors and your community. Really, there's so many things I took when I had my fourth child, I took a diffuser into my hospital room and the nurses are like, we love that. I wish I had a card. Now I have a card to give them. But the thought of quote unquote working while also having a, a birthing a baby is like, no, mm -mm, awful. Like you shouldn't have to worry about your MLM business while you're birthing a child. It's wild to me. That's how we've kind of sustained and built our businesses is really connecting with our community. Okay. Are you, I am so happy to hear from you, Kimberly. And I actually didn't know that you had, did you say you had four kids? I did not know that. That's amazing. I don't uh, take care of them. <laughs> I let, I, I think I just like see you bopping around in your reels with your work wife. And I'm just like, oh, they're just like these like people out there having fun. <laughs> we really just got this like crew of kids at your house. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm next, right. Just to make sure I was like popping in, but I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so thank you, Kimberly. So I'm going to introduce my friend, Megan McMartin to you. And I'm really excited for you guys to hear from her. 
Megan, oh man, we go way back and she and I have known each other for, I don't even know how many years now, but a lot. And we've been through a lot of life together. I have literally been in the room when her baby was being born and, um, I have just watched her grow and pivot and step into hard things in ways that like, I've never seen anyone do in my entire life. And I have watched her stay so true to who she is and the crazy person that God made her to be but also step into a leadership role. And so when Danielle asked us to like talk about someone who has had like a shift in momentum and, you know, has worked on creating culture, she is the actual first person on my team, my team of thousands of people that popped into my mind, because especially over the last year and a half, I have watched as she has stepped up. And I've talked about this. If you've been on these calls, you probably heard me kind of rambling about how I've been a little bit lost myself. And she's one of the people who I have seen as I try to find my way. She just said, all right, Emily, you do you. I love you. Go hide if you need to hide in a hole for a minute, but I'm taking this seriously and I'm owning this and I'm going to pivot and I'm going to shift the momentum myself if you're not able to do that right now. (laughs) And her friendship has meant so much to me because even though she has just like passed me over the past year and a half, um, she has still stayed such a close friend to me and really cared for my heart and loved me through a season when I just needed like super unconditional love. And so my heart is very big for her, my love for her in a friendship level, but also it's been cool for me to respect her in a business uh, sense now. And I see her at- This is all love bombing. So when they're introducing their person, they're just crapping love bombs all over them. And then letting them talk. Come on now. Like, yeah, introduce them and like, say they're awesome and what they've done that's awesome, but like just profusely love bombing them is gross. As a very strong and powerful leader, someone who I would wanna follow. When I watch her stories, I'm like, I would sign up with her. Like, I feel that way about lots of my people. I'm like, bro, like, can you be my enroller? Like, I'm trying to like get in on all your team calls and like learn from how you share. And she is that for me. So I want you guys to get a taste of that. If you're not following her on Instagram or TikTok, you can do that because she is being a goofy mom and just like being her crazy self. You guys, I, in Nashville, I have never seen my friend just enjoy her life so much as I saw. And I want to make a compilation of all of the dancing and silly faces that she made over the weekend. I still am going to do it. I'm going to do it one time. One day when I can't sleep, I'm making that real and it's going out to the internet. Anyway, all right. I could talk about Meg forever because I love her so much, but I'm passing it over to her because she's the one with the knowledge. I love you guys. Take it away, Meg. There is one thing I wanted to talk about really quick before Megan starts talking. Emily mentions how she like had to take a step back and like take a year or probably like quite a while, less than a year, I'm guessing, but probably quite a while, like quote unquote off or like hiding in a hole. Those are the words that she used and that Megan stepped up. But here's the deal. Emily is still Megan's leader, even though Emily took so much time off and Megan apparently did at least decent through the whole issue that was that Young Living was and is still having and like quote unquote the like downfall process starting. It's interesting. That tells me one thing. The top leader doesn't have to work to make an income or to keep a team. They probably just need to buy a certain amount of products a month. Once they've hit like the people that they need, you know, probably like six or eight leaders, quote unquote leaders of the team, or like you can find it on the compensation plan where it's like, I oh, I need two people to hit this level, one person hit this, I need to have three of these people. And it's usually like, you just need a total of like six or eight people to hit certain levels, not even the top at certain levels for you to hit the top a royal crown diamond or whatever so she probably got that and just like had this horrible experience where the downfall of young living was coming hid in her hole and just let megan do most of the work while she hid i i have a feeling that that's kind of what happened and that's why emily is still the quote-unquote leader in this particular area (laughs) that was thank you that was quite the intro can you guys hear me okay my internet like i've been up and down okay so I'm just gonna go for it. I am like, you know, I'm like, I'm ready to just speak so much over you guys. Like, I'm so honored to be on this call. And like, I just have so much that I wanna say. And I really, really hope that you leave just feeling like you have some wind in your sails and like you are ready to just take this on. So I'm just going to- <laughs> I will say before I let her begin again, uh, it's her internet that's going in and out, not like anyone else's. Start by saying I have so much that I want to say and could say. And I want to share with you a little bit about where I started um and where I am right now so that you can get just get the full picture of where I'm coming from so if you had spoken to me two years ago I think it was about two years ago that I went on a little trip with Steph and Emily for Carmen's birthday and if you had spoken to me two years ago you would have been speaking to a depressed stressed out 
extremely insecure people pleaser. Like that was me to a T. Okay. I would say that I was successful in my business in the sense that I was able to push through a lot of like very, very difficult seasons in my life, um, purely out of like a, a seasons of just motivation and just pushing through. Like there was no thriving involved. It was just like, I'm going for this because I'm going for this. Um, I remember I would ask mostly Emily and Steph, like I would ask them for feedback on everything. Like I would send them a picture of my, of my post before posting it. I would send them screenshots of my captions and be like, what do you think of this? Blah, blah, blah. Like there was just so much like of not being secure in myself. I would go on trips and constantly compare my clothes, wonder if I should insert myself into pictures, feel like an imposter. Like I just felt so insecure in myself. Um, the first three years of my business were me surviving and making it by on bad habits and motivation. <laughs> there was a lot of motivation though. So that really got me by. Um, the last two years of my story though, have required like the only term for it is radical ownership. Like it has been radical ownership, the grittiest grit there ever was massive pivoting and a total 180 with how I've done my business. Like I am not the same person I am today as the person I started this business. And I am- I will say that Megan is definitely the most likable person here. I mean, Abby's like, not to like hate on her, I just didn't get a good vibe, but Megan is the most likable person, I think. And there are some, some of her points that I enjoy, but like overall, we have some stuff to talk about. I am so, like, I just got chills saying that because like, that is the gift here, guys. Like that is the gift. So I am a different girl today and I would venture to say that I'm actually the most confident I've ever been in my whole life. So if, and, and Young Living, my business with Young Living, like is absolutely part of the catalyst of that. There's obviously a lot of other things I'm going to get into as well, but that has been a huge piece to my story. And it has actually fueled my why for continuing to do this because my why has now turned into helping other women find that confidence that I have found. So a little bit of my story. First of all, you are going to be very tempted, as I'm sure you've already felt tempted to do this, to whip out your pen and pencil or take out your notes on your computer and like write down every little thing I'm about to tell you because I am going to give you guys some practicals. And I know that because I've been on enough of these calls <laughs> to know that there's probably some of you here still looking for the secret sauce. You're like, okay, this is going to be the call where she tells me all the things that I have to do. And then poof, I'm going to be a diamond. Like the one ticket item that's going to get you to success. And let me just tell you, there is not one. And if the only thing that I could get you to look at from what I'm telling you tonight is all you have to do is look in the mirror. That's all you have to do to be successful in this business. You have to look in the mirror and really, really look. Um, could you clarify, Megan? What does that even mean? Also, look in the mirror, but never look at the income disclosure statement. Am I right? So I remember actually, this was actually during the pandemic. I remember two years ago when Sarah Thompson, there was like a specific call because she did, she got platinum, he got to platinum by doing all these parties in the pandemic. And so you bet your bottom dollar like that next week, I was literally <laughs> doing a, 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 a party. I was like, Sarah, tell me, tell me all the details. I'm actually doing this next week. Like the script is already ready. So like, just tell me. <laughs> like that was the energy though. Like that was the energy that I was bringing into my business, like scrappy as hell. Yes. But also just like, I'm going to bounce from thing to thing and just hope that one of these things is going to be my magic ticket. Cause like, I haven't gotten there yet. So there's gotta be something right. So platinum in a pandemic. That's what I clung to. Thank you, Sarah Thompson. God bless you. Um, okay. But let me tell you right now the how and the what, right? Like the action steps, the IPAs, those things that I'm going to share with you. Um, the classes I did, the new things I've had to learn so many new things I've had to learn the last two years. They will not mean a darn thing if you don't figure out why you're here quickly. Like you have got to figure out why you're here, why you're doing this business, why it's worth you getting uncomfortable. Like, why is it worth you getting uncomfortable? Because if you haven't noticed yet, I'm guessing you're on this call because like you've experienced that already. But if you have not come to grips with the fact that you're going to feel uncomfortable with this business, I'm just going to lay it down for you. You will get uncomfortable. And if you don't know why you're here, the discomfort is going to push you straight off the edge and you will not come back to this business. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I have a theory, okay? And my theory is that I don't think they really care about why you're here. They don't really care about your story necessarily, like the why. You know, the why is usually pretty basic. It's usually like, I wanted to make more money. I love the products. I wanted to help people. Like they're pretty basic. They don't, so they don't actually care about the why. I think what they care about is people sensationalizing their why. They want you to sensationalize it, make it something that it's not, to tug on people's emotions. It's emotional manipulation is what it is. That's what they care about. Not necessarily your why. They don't care to hear it. They care if it 
manipulate people's emotions, essentially. Tell me your thoughts on that below. And if you don't take serious inventory about what's going on between your ears in your brain, Abby was talking about this, and I was just like clapping in the comments. If you do not take inventory about what's going on in your head, you, you will reach a point where you can't move forward in your business. Because I'll tell you right now, if there's one thing I've learned over the last two years is that your mindset actually affects everything and especially your business. It affects how you talk about the business. It affects how you show up online. It affects the type of people you're bringing in, like your thoughts it impact everything. And I'd venture to say as well, um, that unless you loosen your grip, this is kind of a separate point. If, unless you loosen your grip on what success means to you, you're going to be left disappointed. Uh, for the longest time, like my idea of success was a certain number of paycheck and a certain rank. Well, guess what? I got to both of those things. And then in 2020, they both went to hell. <laughs> they both were like, bye, nice to see you. We're going away. <laughs> Who knows when they're coming back? So for me, if I was still hanging on the thread of like, oh my gosh, I need to get back to gold. Oh my gosh, I need my paycheck to be this much. You guys, I would, I mean, there's so many times I kind of wanted to quit over the last two years, if I'm being honest, but I had to redefine what does success mean to me? Because if it's those two things, like that's not going to keep me. Okay. So she says she has to get back to gold. Gold is 0.2% of the company with a median of 45,600 a year. So, so that means she must be at silver, which is less 0.9% of the company. She's in top 1% making 13,375 a year. She's probably making more. I'm guessing she might be on the higher end, but that's the median. These people act like they're making a bunch of money. And I think they mostly all are, but silver is not very high. There's gold, platinum, diamond, crown, diamond, royal, crown, diamond, above silver. Oh, but, but don't worry. It's still less than 1% of the company. So I guess it is kind of high. I'm gonna keep me here because like the last two years have come and gone and I still haven't gotten back to those things. So what's keeping me here? All right, where was I? Um, <clears throat> okay, those things are just vapors in the wind if you don't have a grasp on your self-worth side of them. And like, I just want you to know that like your worth, and you're gonna hear me say this so many times, like your worth does not come from your rank and your paycheck and your success in this business. You have to come into this business knowing your worth and that it's outside of those things, but that you have something to bring into the business too. So I'm gonna just revisit um, <coughs> the last few years for me. <laughs> I'm sure you all have your own little journey, but I'm going to share mine. So it's hard to pinpoint when it all started. So we're just going to say 2020, right? Okay. Just 2020 in general. I was planning out my six month journey to hit platinum, you know, platinum in a pandemic. That was my goal, right? I literally think I probably sent Emily a screenshot of like, here's my rank map. I'm hitting it by November. Let's go. We had riots. We had fires. We had social justice, brokenness. We had the hand sanitizer broom of 2020. Like it was all just happening at the hand sanitizer. Like that's what sent me. I was like, this is the month we're going for platinum. This is it. <laughs> That's right. I'm pretty sure Young Living in 2020 because of the, the pandemic, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I say it just because sometimes YouTube's funny, but I don't really know. Like people say that sometimes YouTube's funny about it, but I don't know if that's true. Like whatever. Also, pandemic's more fun than, also Panini's fun too. To say. Anyway, back to the story. I'm pretty sure Young Living sold expensive hand sanitizer and that you know a lot of people were having to buy hand sanitizer during that time and they sold expensive hand sanitizer and that was a way for them to try to rank up i'm pretty sure that they did that i'm pretty sure that's what she's talking about they sold expensive hand sanitizer so that they can rank up quicker because people weren't buying like that many other things and they knew they'd buy hand sanitizer that's my thought what's yours we're going <laughs> oh my gosh god bless okay um and then, you know, sadly, my, one of my builders, one of my core leaders passed away at the beginning of 2021. And that was very, very shocking. Uh, and I wouldn't say that that was like the catalyst, but it was more of a continuation of the downfall. Like it was just like, oh, and this like massive thing is now going to happen. And an entire organization pretty much is going to like fall away because I mean, truly when, yeah, I mean, just going to run to the tension. Like if, when, if your leader passed away, like, I mean, all of those people are no longer with me. And like, I, I can't imagine what that would have felt like to join with someone and have that happen. So like, it, it doesn't surprise me. Um, and then I remember being on a trip with Emily and staff, like I said. Imagine one of your big legs on your team passing away and being so bummed about not having that leg anymore. I hope that honestly, she was more respectful than that to other people about it. And like, maybe in front of that person's family she's more respectful i don't know maybe not but like imagine you your worry is that oh you lost a whole leg that's concerning Car carmen's birthday party <laughs> let me just say 17 year old b-day party in an airbnb i think i slept maybe 30 minutes <laughs> it's fine um 
Okay, but I specifically, what I specifically remember about that trip was that we were talking, talking about business stuff. And I do, I remember at that point I was really, I was kind of starting to struggle with some postpartum depression and I was just so immersed in my business. Like I was just like in the zone of like, I'm in it to win it. I'm doing all the things. I like can't stop, won't stop all these things. And Emily, I remember you looked at me and you were like, Meg, like what's bringing you joy, like outside of your business. And I remember just like tearing up because like I had nothing. The things that used to bring me joy didn't, I didn't really care about any of them, didn't care about CrossFit, didn't care about music. I was just literally young living, ride or die. And that wasn't young living's fault. It was my own fault. Uh, right. <laughs> um, and also just like, well, I mean, that's not necessarily your fault. Uh, because I think that a lot of MLMs, including Young Living, push that, like, ride or die Young Living, like, ride or die Arbonne, like, whatever it is, they push it like, that's your entire being. It's like my mental health struggle, but that was like a very pivotal moment for me of like, there's something like I didn't, I wasn't ready to change, but it was like, there's like, I need to be aware here. Like, this is not okay. And so it was, I think around that time that like, Emily, you slowly started taking a step back um, from things. and just to like take care of your family and some personal things in your life. And I think it, you know, it happened slowly over time, but it was really hard. Like it was hard for me. It was really sad. Um, you know, my bestie who I signed up with and chatted with, like we had worker bee chats and just like FaceTime chats all the time, doing classes together. Um, and it was sad. Like on one level, I just missed my friend. Um, and on another level, I was also experiencing just a very new season of my business where she was just no longer a part of it. Um, and it wasn't just her, obviously, you know, it was the culture too, that I was part of, of like, I grew up with, you know, like Emily and Amanda and Danielle and Kate. like, I grew up like looking up here. Like that's what my vision was. Right. And now I was having to step back and say, I just need to shift the focus and I need to be the one that's here. I need to stop looking up at everyone else and to see what they're going to do. And I need to start looking at myself and how can I start pivoting? So at that point I had to decide, like, am I going to let Emily stepping back for this season derail me? Or am I going to realize that this business is actually something that I want? And it wasn't hanging on her to build my business for me. Um, so that's when I decided that I had to like take radical ownership. And again, it wasn't like this big boom moment. Like this was a journey y'all like holy personal growth. Wow. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I just kind of had to keep telling myself, like, am I going to sit here and complain and wallow? Or am I going to stare myself in the mirror and look at the ways that I've actually created my own lack of success here? Am I willing to do that? So getting back to tonight's topic of momentum and culture, um, I just want to pose a couple questions. Like, what if those things actually are different than what you thought? What if momentum isn't just the high paychecks and OGV booming? What if culture isn't hundreds of people joining your team? What if momentum looks like your team actually shifting their mindset and seeing personal growth and doing scary things? And what if the things that actually create momentum are the things you're avoiding? And I'm not talking about the live videos and the classes. I'm talking about the heart and the heart work and the mind work that you're not doing. The why you assume your brand partners just don't want it when they ghost you. Why you don't ask them questions instead of assuming the worst. Why you won't just freaking put on an in-person event, people. Like, why aren't you doing it? <laughs> First off was the panini, okay? So that's probably why they weren't. Even though you were, Megan, they weren't because safety and health and living. She's talking about the heart work and the mind work that you need to do. The belief, the mindset. No, no, no thought reform. She wants their minds to, in my opinion, be reformed. She's talking about personal development, mindset, all of that stuff. But in reality, what the goal is with what they're saying is any of those things. It's thought reform. It's loose sense of self, loose sense of logic, loose sense of reality so that you can do these things. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about whatever. Don't worry about the people. Work on indoctrination so that this isn't as hard for you to do. And that's why I think it's important to cover these kinds of videos and top leaders at that because they see things like that that seem almost harmless, but there's something wrong with it. I'm happy to explain and I'm happy to be here to show you what's wrong with it. We're almost done. Underneath, I venture to say that you have a lot of thoughts of fear and you have a lot of things that are like holding you back. Those are the things, those things that you aren't working through, like your fear of failure or fear of someone judging you. That's actually what's holding you back. That's what's preventing your momentum right there. Secondly, as far as, as culture goes, like I had to realize that I actually get to create my own culture. Emily created the most beautiful culture. We rise by lifting others. I have it like all over my Stanley cup. Like it, that is like, it has stuck with me for so long, but I got to a point where I was like, I actually 
I get to create what I want here and it doesn't have to look how it used to. And I venture to say like, it kind of has to change right now. And so I did. Um, so uh, let's talk about mindset before I get into the uh, nitty gritty of like actual things I did because there was a lot. So the biggest thing that I d- figured I needed to work on was my own personal confidence and sense of burnout. Like I was so burned out, so burned out um, just from doing all the things and the world being on fire and just like everything. I was just emotionally spent as I'm sure many of you were. And so one of the first things that I had to work through was my mistaken belief that I had to burn myself out and work 24 seven in order to be successful. And no one outright told me this. Okay. No one outright told me that, but that is kind of what I just took on. Like if I want to be where I want to be, like, I'm going to have to sacrifice like everything. And, um, and I was just unhealthy in it. And so I'm currently, still on a journey of like being this pioneer in my life of being of doing this like very sustainably and with a lot of boundaries and I you know struggled for a while like oh my gosh is this going to even I set boundaries but I'm just sitting on the other side of it and like feeling how I feel right now like it is possible you guys okay she literally said is this going to be possible with having boundaries it the internet kind of messed up on her part um, but that, but that's what she said because it's true. They don't have boundaries. They can't really have boundaries. But don't forget, her leader, uh, her leader took some time off, right? So she didn't have someone above her telling her, mm, "You need to work. Like you need to keep going." So the boundaries, while I think they're very healthy and very important, she was able to do it because she didn't have someone above her taking control of her. She was able to take control of herself and then take control of her downline. However, just because it's possible for her, because she's a higher rank than most, doesn't mean that people below are having boundaries and them ranking up is possible for them. I don't believe that it is. She also mentioned that she's not able to get back to where she was. And that was like so one of her beginning statements is that she's not back to where she was before everything went down with Young Living and whatever. And, and part of that, I can guarantee you, it's the boundaries. It's the taking off Saturday and Sunday from working. And while those are important to have with MLMs, it's almost impossible to do unless you do it like later on when you're a higher rank. It is possible to be successful while working with attention, with boundaries and working hard. Like, don't forget that part. Like, that's actually the most important. Like, if you set boundaries within your boundaries, you have to actually work. Okay. Um, and that's not to say there won't be seasons of sprinting. Like, you can bet your bottom dollar. I am trying to get some Kona points this week and I'm working a little bit more for them um, because I want it. And so, and I'm okay with that because I'm not working like that 24 seven. So I'm comfortable with, like, I'm going to go bust the ball this week and I'm going to be good with that. Okay. So a couple of things that I did as far as mindset goes, like personally, I go to therapy every single week, zero shame. If you don't have a therapist, please get one if you need. Yes, Megan. (laughs) Tell these crunchy people who don't like shots that save your life and science uh, that they need to go to therapy. They do. They do. I like, and I think that's why I like Megan more (laughs) than everyone else is because of that line right there. I'll give her that. Help financially. Look at better help. Very great option for that. Um, something else I also did, and I'm not pitching this, this is just what I did as I joined uh, Kristen Boss's Social Selling Academy. I personally felt like I was at a place where I needed a business coach. So I invested in that. Um, if you're not at a- That's funny because Abby was like calling those coaches, like people who say they're experts when they're not. I'm pretty sure that's like what she was kind of talking about. But like I said, I think my thought was like a little underlining thing that she was saying. However, both Kim and Megan are like, screw what Abby says. <laughs> They're just like going against what she says and saying, do this. It's kind of funny. The point where that's like something you want to do, her podcast and Instagram are phenomenal too. And she's just someone that I personally um, respect the things that she says. And I did the hard work, you guys. Like I, every single day, every day before I work, I write down all the thoughts I'm having. 90% of the time, the ones that come up are, I don't know what to do. I feel overwhelmed and I have too much work. Every day, <laughs> every day those thoughts come up, but I work through them. And that's part of working on yourself is being an active player in the game. Megan, I thought we were setting boundaries so we wouldn't have those feelings every day. I have a feeling that those boundaries aren't what she's saying they are. You don't just like figure it out one day and then say, oh, I got it figured out. No, it's practicing. Confidence and discipline take practice, daily practice. And that's what I'm in the business of doing over here. So, and also just reminding myself, and this is again, something that I practice and choose is that I have a choice in my perspective. I have a choice in how I respond to things and I have a choice in what I think. Those three things that I'm like repeating myself. I have a choice. I have a choice here. A few other things I want to offer you before I give you some more practicals. Um, and so, oh wait, actually I already said that. I already said that. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Um, okay. I was just going to talk about the, your value and worth being outside of your paycheck and stuff. Okay. 
So a couple of things that I have done to like actually pivot, right? Because I know some of you are like, but what did you do? Okay. Um, first and foremost, I got some systems in place. I was very consistent online and I recreated some culture in my team. So practically I downloaded the Life Steps app, guys. Okay. Full disclosure, you need the app. It's just like the easiest thing. And especially if you don't have anything, like if you have a system that works for you, it might not be for you. Like I'm not sitting here saying everybody needs it, but like if you don't have a system, get one and it's already there for you. Um, so I use that for so many things. I link resources there. You can have people sign up through there. They have um, brand partner courses. That's how I take new brand partners through. <clears throat> so something that I do with my team is they have a weekly tracker in the app and we, my, me and my core leaders, we share our weekly trackers every single week in our Boxer thread. We share personal goals every single week and we share uh, wins and what we're working on. So every week, those are my core, like with my core people every Monday. So that went out today. Good job, guys. Good job, fam. They're here. Um, I started doing try before you buys. Uh, Steph, I don't know who came up with this. I think it was Steph or maybe some other girls on my team. But basically, we do a lot of those. I do. A, I try and do one once a month. So typically, it's with Ningxia Red. That has become like my actual ride or die product. Yeah. Ningxia Red was one of those products that the FDA was like, y'all are using it as prescription drugs. So I don't know what that means, but... No bueno, Megan. Put the Ningxia down. Um, and I may have them pay like anywhere, usually around 10 bucks. I send them a sample box and then we have a thread on Instagram. I have had countless people join Young Living through that. If not during the class, then like a couple months later. I set actual boundaries. I personally do not work on Saturday and Sunday. I have screen time on all of my social media apps. I sometimes even turn my phone off for a full day. Um, this was important for me. That won't be for everybody. For me, I cannot have my phone on me at all times. It stresses me out. Yeah, so not for everybody. You mean not for most people, especially if they're not at the rank that you're at. Their lower ranks are gonna have to be going hard 24 seven. That's just the life of MLM. It's toxic hustle culture. So the setting that was really important for me. <clears throat> I do one in-person event every month. That has been a recent thing. I moved to Colorado last year and had to completely rebuild my community. And before you say, oh, you moved to a new place. Now you have all these new people. Like, no, don't think that. I had to work really hard to build community. I went to open gyms. I went to mops. I joined a church, literally invited anybody and everybody to my house literally handed out my phone number like freaking hotcakes. And sometimes I didn't like those people that I connected with. And sometimes we hit it off. Like you just got to be like willing to fail and put yourself out there. So I'm having a sourdough party on Friday. Am I an expert on sourdough? No, but I know how to make it. So they're coming over and I'm teaching them what I do. Um, and I'm doing an oils 101 class in person next month, <clears throat> which I haven't done in probably two years. So here we go. Okay. Other things that I practically learned. Okay. Um, I learned how to copyright. Look it up, Google it, okay? Copywriting is different than content. I'm not gonna get into that, but actually learning a skill, a marketing skill. Um, I started making reels very consistently. If you are not doing reels, guys, not to go viral, not anything other than like- I need some people to explain to me why that copyright thing that she's doing is important. What's the point of her knowing copyright? I don't know. Maybe I just don't know much about it to bring value to your people. It's a very valuable tool, okay? I created an email list. I launched my website and blog. I focused more on value that I could offer versus going viral. Um, but the biggest shift for me surrounding my actual business, like I said, was fo focusing on doing this sustainably. Um, so a couple of things regarding culture. I do weekly calls, like I said, with my, I offer a weekly coaching calls is what I call them. I separated my boxer threads. And I, I think it was a couple months ago, I put out a post on Facebook and I said, hey, I got two threads. These are the stipulations for my squad core group of people. If you want to be in that thread, your, your expectation is you're going to share your weekly tracker every single Monday. You're going to be hyping everyone up in that thread. You're going to show up to the weekly calls. Like that's your expectation. If you're not ready for that, that's fine. I've got this other thread over here that very quickly helped me see who was ready to like be in it. And guess what? 90% of those girls come to every single one of my weekly calls. And every, and we love them. Like it's the best. Um, <clears throat> I do, I started doing something called catalyst. I think Kelsey Cole has done this, but it's a 90 day goal setting thing. I just took it and I ran with it. And that's been really helpful to like help my girls actually set goals. I did some one-on-one -on -one calls this month. And then one of the biggest things that I would, that I did as far as culture goes is I got started getting very curious. And if you're a leader, if you have any brand partners underneath you, like I can't express this enough. Like this has actually been such a huge thing for me is getting curious with my people instead of micromanaging, telling people what to do, turning it back on them and saying, well, what do you think about that? Like, what do you think you should do? Tell me why you don't want to do an in-person event. Tell me why you aren't doing reels. Like what's underneath that. And it's totally shifted how I lead. And it's shifted. I believe the community of my team. I've also implemented being grateful, <laughs> you know, gratitude. 
Um, I have had to release what I thought I deserved. Okay. A higher paycheck, a certain rank. And I started with gratitude. People would kill to be where I am right now. People would love to be where I am right now. Um, and that's not to say that I still don't want those things, but for me, it is making on median of $1,300 a year. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm all right. Turn into who am I becoming along the way? Because if I'm a frantic mess on my way to getting 10 K a month and it wrecks my mental health again, like, is that worth it? I don't know about that for me. All right. Talked about systems. And then, um, Okay. And then the last thing, like tangibly, what I have done over the last two years is I started doing these five things daily, Monday through Friday, I make an offer. So that's like, I'm inviting somebody to something, or if you want a sample, blah, blah, blah. I make a post. I connect with five new people who I've never spoken to. So like hashtags or new people at the park, whatever I follow up and I do stories, those five things. <clears throat> okay. That was a lot. So thank you for bearing with me. I have, I have what, like my last thoughts and then I'm done. So here's what I want to leave you with. <clears throat> what if this business could be the catalyst for you becoming the very person that you want to be. You are the only one who gets to determine what success means for you. Okay, both of those are wrong. <laughs> those are both wrong, Megan. Also, total, not to hate, but man, she has taken half, a half hour to do hers. And the other two took 10 minutes and 15, 20 minutes, something like that. 15 and 15. Ugh. Jesus. You are the only one who lives in your head and you are the only one who can choose the thoughts you think. You are the only one who can take radical ownership of your business. If I'm the only one that can choose the thoughts I think, then why do y'all control the thoughts that I think? <laughs> that's what they do in MLMs. And that's what these people in particular, especially Young Living, it's just Young Living is known for their culty religious stuff. And these people are them. And you are the only one who can say right here and right now that you're going to choose discomfort or not. So that's what I have. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you all so much. This is so good. I know for all of our hearts to hear you guys and you guys listening in business collective know exactly why we wanted you to hear from these women tonight. Because so thank you for watching. Please like subscribe if you want to and leave your commentary below. I want to hear what you have to say about this. I'm not going to yap on at the end because we've already been watching this video for so long. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Bye.